Well, would you take your Bibles? Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Normally, when you turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, you immediately begin to think about the Christmas story. Well, there is something very special about this story. We're going to look at another character in the Bible as we have done for the last several, several weeks of looking at different biblical characters. And today we're going to look at a character by the name of Simeon. God made a special promise to Simeon and that promise was fulfilled as we see it in the scriptures here today. Luke chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading in verse 25 and go through verse 35. And so with your Bibles open, would you stand with me in reading of God's precious, infallible, and errant word of God. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. What a promise. The Holy Spirit had told this man that you will live because you will live to the point of where you'll have the opportunity to see the Lord Jesus Christ and you will not die beforehand. And the Bible says, and it revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. You know what he was saying? <laughs> My mission has been fulfilled. I have seen the Christ and I'm ready to go be with the Lord. The Bible says in verse 30, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for these special words found in this precious Word of God. We pray, dear Lord, that today that you will just give us an insight and an understanding of a man by the name of Simeon who was filled with the Holy Spirit, used by God in a very special, special way. We pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will find that he may use us according to his will. Praying, dear Lord, for the anointing and the filling of your, your Holy Spirit. And praying, dear Lord, that your word might go forth in a way that it will touch our hearts and encourage our lives. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this special time. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. What a special, special moment this must have been 
in the life of Simeon that he was able to see the Lord Jesus Christ, even hold him in his arms and in his hands. Oh, my, my, my. You and I know how special it is to experience Christ as our Savior and our Lord. But isn't it sad? Among our Jewish friends, they're still seeking Him. Isn't it sad that they're still longing for the Messiah to come? I found it interesting the other day that I found this prayer that on the eve of Holy Days, the Sabbath day, on Friday nights, as they would assemble in temples and synagogues, that they would pray such a prayer. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise, put on the garments of thy glory, O my people. Through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, draw nigh unto my soul, redeem it. You know what that prayer is saying? We're longing for the Messiah. It's a prayer for the Messiah to come. Isn't that sad? Isn't it sad that they feel that their Messiah has yet to come? And yet, the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 11, where Jesus says, I come unto my own, and my own receive me not. We're reminded that even John the Baptist introduced them to the Messiah. And the Bible tells us, in John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave the rights to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on him, that they might become the sons of God. Oh, my friend, I am grateful to know that I have been introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ personally, and that I know him in a very personal manner. And my heart is saddened when I think about our Jewish friends long are longing for His coming. I'm reminded of what Isidore Singer said. Isidore Singer is the managing editor of the Jewish Encyclopedia. And this is what he said. I regard Jesus of Nazareth as a Jew of the Jews, one whom all Jewish people are learning to love. His teachings have been in an immense service to the world and bringing Israel's God to knowledge of hundreds of millions of mankind. We're all glad to claim Jesus as one of our people. Now, isn't that sad? They claim him to be one of their people, but not their Messiah. They look at him as being a great teacher, but not their Messiah. Rabbi J.L. Levy said, I personally regard him as one of the greatest spiritual teachers the world has ever known. Rabbi Rudolf Grossman said, he said, we Jews honor the Nazarene as our brother in faith, sprung from our loins, nurtured as at Israel's knee, a teacher of sweet and beautiful ideas, a preacher who influenced, has been and still is among the mightiest spiritualizing factors in the world. I'm here to announce to you today, my friend, he's more than a spiritual teacher. Right. He is more than just a great Jew. Right. He is the son of the living God. Amen. He is the Messiah, the one that had left the glories of heaven, as Brother Gerald spoke about earlier. And left the glories of heaven coming into this world to give his life as a ransom for you and I. Oh, Simeon, he had longed and waited for the coming of that Messiah. 
And the Bible tells us in the ver- in 25th verse of the second chapter that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Simeon, tradition tells us, was a very old man. In fact, some tells us that he was as old as 113 years old when this took place. But what an experience that Simeon had. I want to share with you something very special this morning. There's three different ingredients about this passage of Scripture about Simeon. First of all, I want us to look at Simeon praying. We are introduced to Simeon in verse 25. It says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting, listen to this, for the consolation of Israel. The word consolation is an interesting word. It literally means comfort. Or it means encourager. They were waiting for someone to come to encourage the Jewish people at that hour. One to comfort them because they, of course, been in that terrible yoke of the Roman government. And there we meet Simeon in the scriptures. And what is he doing? He is praying for the Messiah, for the Messiah to come. The word waiting means that we're allowing and admitting his presence into our lives. So I want you to notice two different characteristics about Simeon here today. First of all, the dedication that he exemplified. Simeon was a tremendous, mighty man of God. Luke tells us that Simeon was just and devout. Now, that's very important. Adam Clark, a great theologian, said this about him. He said that this man is distinguished because of his singular piety. There can be no doubt that there were many persons in Jerusalem named Simeon besides this man. But there was none of the name who merited the attention of God so much as he is in the text. Such preserving exemplary piety was very rare. And therefore, the inspired penman ushers in the account which with behold. Friend, what I am trying to say here today is that Luke begins to remind us that he was a devout man. A man that someone that rightly believed in the promises of God. See, it's one thing to believe in God. It's another thing to believe in the promises of God. This Bible tells us faith is an ingredient that we can come before the Lord and to honor Him. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible tells us it's impossible to believe God without faith. And so here was a man of faith. He was devout. He took the promises of God and he believed in the consolation of Israel that the Messiah is coming. My friend, that tells me something very special about what I should be doing and what you should be doing today. The Messiah has come the first time. But my friend, the Bible tells us He's coming again. And therefore, we as believers should believe the Word of God. We should teach the Word of God. We should understand the Word of God. We should exercise the Word of God in believing in the expectation that Christ could come at any time any moment. The Bible says he was a just man. A just man. One that lived according to the word of God. 
In other words, he not only believed the Word, he allowed the Word to uh, direct his life and to govern and dictate his life. I believe that he believed that a man's steps is ordered by the Lord. And therefore, he walked in those steps of righteousness. And there he was a just man. He was a devout man. And because of that, he was, you see that his dedication was exemplified. He was not just an ordinary man, but he was a great man of God. But let's go and look at another aspect about him. Not only the dedication he exemplified, but the revelation that he experienced. We read in verse 25 that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Now that, that is remarkable and that is a tremendous statement. In other words, the Holy Spirit overshadowed him. The Holy Spirit influenced him. The Holy Spirit found that Simeon was a man that could be used by a holy God. And therefore they did. The Bible tells us in verse 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Matthew Poole, a theologian, says this. He says, God by the Holy Spirit gave him this special revelation as the reward of his faith and the answer of his prayers that he should live to see Christ born. A man who not only knew that the Messiah would come, but he even had a special promise by God that he would not die before he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Simeon lived every day. Can you not imagine? Every day he lived a life of expectation. I remember hearing about a story about an orphanage up in the mountains of Tennessee. And it was a Christian orphanage. And they began to realize they had a problem because all the windows in the cafeteria had smudge marks on them. They'd wash them and clean them, and the next thing you know, they'd have smudge marks all over those windows again. And they could not figure out what was going on. Finally, they realized that every morning that these little kids, they would rush to the window because they had been taught that Jesus could come at any moment. And they'd rush to the window and put their little noses and their faces against the window and looking up and wondering if this was the day that he was coming for them. My friend, that's the kind of expectation you and I should have today. Amen. Every day we should wake up in the morning and wonder, I wonder if this is the day that the Lord is going to come. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5 says, And the Lord directs your heart into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. One of my favorite writers, G. Campbell Morgan, he said this, To me, the second coming is the perpetual light on the path which makes the present bearable. I say amen to that. Amen. I never lay my head on my pillow without thinking that maybe before the morning breaks, the final morning may have dawned. I never begin my work without thinking that perhaps he may interrupt my work and begin his own. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day, every day, well, we've looked at Simeon praying. But let's go a little bit further. And let's notice Simeon praising. Simeon praising. Simeon was given the promise that the Holy Spirit, that he would not die until the, he had seen the consolation of Israel. One particular day, 
the Holy Spirit said, let's go down to the temple. I got something I want to show you. And they go down to the temple, and the Bible says in verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. Once again, we see how the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon and how the Holy Spirit used Simeon and how the Holy Spirit directed Simeon. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit spoke and Simeon listened and he followed the Holy Spirit. So they go down to the temple and there the Bible tells us in verse 27 that the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. Can you imagine that day? He walks into the temple and the Holy Spirit says, there he is. This is the one I've been telling you about. This is the one that you have been waiting for. There he is. And the Bible tells us in verse 28 that immediately that he took him up in his arms and blessed God. That word blessed literally means I offer thanks. I offer my praise and gratitude to the one that I hold in my arms. It was A personal praise. Oh, friend, look what it says in verse 29 and 30. It says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He had been given the promise, of course, that he would not die until he had seen that baby Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now you know what he said. I'm ready to go. (laughs) I'm ready to go. I, I have fulfilled my mission. I'm ready to depart, Lord. You can take me, Lord. But I can almost imagine that when Simeon held that little baby in his in his arms, that this excitement. The thrill of knowing that I'm holding in my arms God. I'm looking into the very face of God. I'm seeing the smile of God Himself. Cold chill just runs over my body when I think about an opportunity that Simeon had to know that I am holding him. And can you imagine the praise that began to arise from his heart and from his mouth? Well, my friend, we should be no different. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of God himself in our heart and our lives. And my friend, friend, we can look into his face and say, Lord, I praise you and I honor you today. But he goes a step further, and it was a universal praise, not only a personal praise, but a universal praise. He tells us in verse 31 and 32, he says, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. I wish my Jewish friends could get that. I wish they could understand that. Not only am I looking at my salvation, Simeon says, but I am seeing the salvation of all people. Jews and Gentiles. That's what he is saying here. A light to lighten to the Gentiles. The glory of the people of Israel. He saw a universal salvation. In other words, he is saying that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
Jew or Gentile, male or female, young or old. That it's not limited to no one. I'm reminded of a story when the Prince of Wales visited India that as he was coming into the city, the high class of people were standing around and they stood to meet the prince. Beyond them was a barrier. And it was known as the outcast of the people. The prince of Wales, he shook the hand of all the high-class people. And then he said, take down the barrier and come and let me shake your hand as well. My friend, that's exactly what God did. That when he sent his son into this world, that he said, take down the barrier. Let all come unto me that have heavy ladens and I'll give them rest. Let all come. My friend, I want you to understand, I'm so glad he said all because that included me and that included you. The glory of God. No, yes, this was a personal praise, but it was a universal praise. But in closing, I want you to notice Simeon prophesied. You'll notice this at the conclusion of these verses of Scripture. It says in verse 33, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. They knew who Jesus was. But they were amazed that Simeon recognized him. They were amazed that as they entered into that temple that he recognized them and realized that this was not just any child, but this was the promised Messiah. After Simeon praised God, praised Him personally and universally, Simeon blessed them and blessed this child, as you'll notice in verse 34. And then he began to prophesy. First of all, a prophecy concerning her son. In verse 34, the Bible says, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which he will be spoken against. In other words, he began to prophesy about this child. And I believe it was of the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, where he said, He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and they shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. In other words, he is saying that the Messiah will come. And many are looking for the temporal. They're wanting him to come and rescue them from the bondages of the Roman government and to establish a new government. But the Lord Jesus and the Father had a different idea. He did not come to bless them temporal. He came to bless them eternally. And that he was not as concerned about the temporal as he was concerned about the eternal. Romans chapter 11 verse 26 says, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. As in our time, there are those that who reject the Lord Jesus Christ as we know today. They reject him. 
And yet there are those that have accepted him. They speak against his miracle of birth. I'm reminded of what the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 41. They said, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we, are, we were not born of fornication, but we have one of the Father God. Have you noticed of how the liberals and the world have tried to deify the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ? That, huh. We're not born of a, as a fornicator. And it, we know, of course, that Jesus was virgin birth. They claimed that his miracles were done in the power of Satan as he was on the face of the earth. It says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Why, they scandalize even the death and the burial of resurrection. Even the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ today. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last day, walking according to their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. The whole world, the liberal world, have tried to deface the deity of Christ and the cause of Christ. So we see the prophecy, the prophecy concerning her son, but also the prophecy concerning her sorrow. Simeon prophesied in verse 35, Yes, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul, also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. In other words, you know what he was saying to Mary? That Mary, there's a sword that's going to penetrate your life, and it's going to cut, and it's going to hurt, can you imagine the pain and the suffering that Mary experienced in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you imagine being at the cross, the foot of the cross, and watching those nails penetrating his hands? Can you imagine Mary experiencing when he cries out, My God, my God, why hast thou left me? All oh, the pain, the pain that Mary must have suffered. Simeon was prophesying all this in that few moments there in the temple. When I think about Simeon, the thing that I take away from Simeon is the expectation, even in the midst of a world that we live in today, with the, all the crime and all the, the drug infestation, I think about of all the sins, and I think, is there not any hope? And then I'm reminded of what Simeon says, I long for that day when I see my Christ. I long for that day when I see that Christ. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if Jesus came back today to rapture His church and you'd be left behind? You say, Pastor, how in the world could that happen? Well, my friend, the Bible tells us that unless we have experienced Christ as our Savior and our Lord, that we've not been born into His family. We're not a part of the bride. We're not a part of that that bride that he's coming back for. So I want to ask you a question today. If Jesus would come back today, within the next 30 seconds, would you be in that number? Would you be in that number? I trust that you would. For the Bible says there will be two. 
One taken and one left behind. What a shame. But you know, not only do I think about the importance of knowing that when he comes back that I'll be prepared and ready for him, but have I shared with others that he's coming back? I believe Simeon did. I believe Simeon told his friends that the Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. Get ready. Because the Messiah is coming. If there's ever a time, church, that we should be sharing that the Messiah is coming again, it should be today. should be today. Will you be willing to do that? Father, thank you for your precious word. Thank you for reminding us through Simeon of the importance of expectation. Father, I'm grateful that he was a man that believed your word and he was dedicated to fulfill your word even to the, all, to the point of saying, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die for I have fulfilled my mission. Lord, I wonder how many today could say, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. At any moment, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man wants to die. And to come to the realization that death is at our doorstep. Are we ready for it? That is the question today. Am I ready for the coming of Christ? Lord, we need to be prepared. Not only believe the book, but allow the book to be obeyed by our lives. Lord, we love you and we're grateful for the way that you've demonstrated your mighty power through the life of Simeon today. In Jesus we pray. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. This hymn of invitation is allowing you an opportunity to make yourself ready for that special moment. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to know that if he came today that you'd be in that number? If not, you can be, for he's given you an opportunity here today. Maybe you're here today and you say, I've done that, but I've never been baptized like these that were baptized today. You need to come and be baptized as well. Some may need to come and unite with our church. However the Lord leads you, would you just simply trust him and obey him?